Today we're going to talk about anti-inflammatories in your muscle. I'll see you inside. So the topic of today's episode is actually going to be what are referred to as non-steroidal anti-inflammatories and antioxidants. The non-steroidal anti-inflammatories are things like ibuprofen and Advil, and antioxidants are things like vitamin C supplements and vitamin E supplements. And I'll put simply, what these things do is they either reduce or completely circumvent the inflammatory response that occurs in your body naturally. And now, there is kind of a problem with this because it seems that in order for the body to repair and to grow stronger, it seems that inflammation is actually necessary for the process of strengthening yourself. Oftentimes, it's thought that exercise will cause inflammation. And while technically this is correct, exercise is not actually what causes the inflammation. Exercise causes muscular damage, and the way the body responds to muscular damage is by actually promoting localized inflammation. We actually produce what are called inflammatory compounds, which cause the inflammation and localize it in a specific area. And the area it's localized is whatever tissue needs to be repaired. Inflammation is actually a physiologic response to stress. And yes, exercise will produce some degree of inflammation, but the majority of inflammation is actually produced after the fact. This is why we get something like delayed onset muscle soreness, where the muscle soreness and that inflammation actually comes 24 to 48 hours after the workout. Without inflammation, we actually would not send a signal to repair damaged tissue. And therefore, some level of inflammation is actually necessary and beneficial. Without inflammation, the body wouldn't know what needs to be repaired and we'd begin deteriorating from the inside. This is why we don't just put the entire world on what are referred to as immunosuppressants to suppress their immune system. Immunosuppressants could be beneficial for someone with a very overactive immune system, but if your immune system is not there at all, then you won't be able to fight off any pathogens or bacteria. And now I think the body is actually a lot smarter than most people give it credit for. We have this elegant system in which when there's some sort of damage or stress inside of our body, we are not only able to repair it, but we actually seem to build up stronger machinery in order to circumvent the likelihood that we would be adversely influenced by the same stimuli in the future. To do this, we simply build stronger cellular machinery and better functioning cellular machinery so that we are more capable of resisting the same negative forces in the future. One great example is the concept of getting a flu shot. It is simply just exposing the body to a given pathogen purposefully to cause the inflammatory response and then the immune response that follows after. The immune system will respond by creating and storing cells that are able to easily and quickly fight off this flu pathogen in the future. And now how the immune system does this is absolutely fascinating, but that could be another hour-long podcast. But the same is also true with how we grow muscle tissue. If we expose a muscle to a degree of tension in which it has never been exposed to before, the tensile strength of the muscle is not adequate enough to handle the force. Therefore, we actually damage the cellular structure of the muscle, and inflammation is the signal to repair it. Inflammation is like putting yellow tape up around a crime scene. It is simply just indicating where the damage has occurred so that the requisite material is localized more heavily to the site of inflammation such that it can be repaired. And similarly to the immune system, when we repair the muscle, we also plan for the future. And we do this by making these muscles stronger by adding in more structural protein and increasing the number of nuclei inside of the muscle. Therefore, in the future, the muscle is able to resist and produce much more force. And this is the entire basis of exercise adaptations. And now we can actually look at this in terms of endurance adaptations as well. It appears that these adaptations are much less predominated by adding in additional structural proteins. However, we will increase the number and function of our mitochondria and the enzymes responsible for producing energy. This is because it appears that most of the inflammation caused by endurance training is not necessarily a response to muscle breakdown as much as it is a response to the inability to metabolize energy quick enough. When the energy demands exceed our capacity to metabolize energy because of the cellular systems that we currently have in place, 
we will actually create what are called oxidative radicals, which are simply byproducts of, the, for lack of a better word, not being able to cleanly oxidize energy. It is almost like our cellular machinery kind of gets stuffed up because of how much energy we are trying to produce. Then these free radicals are actually released and can cause some degree of cellular damage. And free radicals are the things that antioxidants work to prevent. Simply free radicals have a charge that requires what's referred to as neutralizing. And antioxidants are used to neutralize these free radicals. And without enough antioxidants, these free radicals will neutralize themselves by stealing energy from cellular machinery. And this is how they will cause inflammation in the long run. However, after exercise, this inflammation will be beneficial because it will signal the need for repair. And therefore, the body will actually respond by upregulating its metabolic machinery so that we can create more energy at a quicker rate, thus increasing our muscular endurance. And now one caveat that I will make sure to mention before I move on is that for all of this to occur, we must have sufficient nutrients available. The one analogy that I often give is that inflammation is like the boss giving directions to its workers. Then the construction workers are all of the inflammatory mediators that actually facilitate the repair. However, if the construction workers do not have any material to do their job, and the material in this case being nutrients like amino acids, then even though we have plenty of workers available, they cannot execute because they do not have the supplies. Therefore, giving the body a reason that it should repair and grow stronger might be somewhat of a fool's errand if we aren't actually providing the nutrients to rebuild and repair. And with that being said, some inflammation is good, but more inflammation is not always better. We can have what is referred to as local inflammation, which would be something like your bicep becoming inflamed after a bicep workout. Or we can have systemic inflammation, which means inflammation that isn't localized to a single area and is kind of around the entire body. And when we are looking at something like a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory or an antioxidant, the reason that these compounds appear to be helping with pain is because inflammation is what causes the pain. And we can assume that these compounds are actually reducing the inflammation in the first place so we do not get any pain. And there are certainly are circumstances where this can be very beneficial if we want to purposefully circumnavigate pain and inflammation. Let's say you were in a scenario in which making exercise adaptations is not at the utmost importance. You can use these compounds to free yourself of pain and achiness. This would be something you can use in an event where you are trying to be as uninflamed as possible so you can perform your best. You are not looking for the adaptation that would come from the event. You are actually trying to display your utmost potential on that specific day or period of time. You kind of just have to delineate between trying to optimize for performance or adapt for long-term performance. Thus, a really easy way to do this would simply be abstaining from any sort of anti-inflammatory or antioxidant compounds if they're not needed during training sessions and then using anti-inflammatories prior to a day you are trying to get maximal performance. And now I don't think we need to worry about anti-inflammatories completely destroying all of our adaptations. However, if we're looking to maximize and simply just be safe that we are not doing the work required but blunting our exercise adaptations due to taking anti-inflammatories, it might be in our best interest just to avoid them. But I will note that there are studies that have demonstrated that the use of anti-inflammatories in elderly individuals actually appears to benefit their muscular adaptations. It appears that because elderly individuals seem to have a low-grade inflammation systemically being produced throughout the entire day, anti-inflammatories actually help them lower their baseline levels of inflammation. Without the anti-inflammatories, the addition of the inflammation caused by exercise puts them in a state of inflammation that is higher than what they can actually recover and repair from. Therefore, the use of anti-inflammatories is actually getting them from a state of too much inflammation to just enough inflammation to make exercise adaptations. It seems that if there's too much inflammation, they'll be expending all of their resources on just 
stopping the inflammation itself and are unable to use resources on actually repairing the damaged muscle tissue. And like I said, these anti-inflammatories just put them in a state that is perfect to repair and grow muscle. Because quite simply, it appears that the body does not actually perceive that it needs to be strengthened without inflammation. And this is why just eating protein won't help you grow your muscles, because you need to actually put the stress on the muscles to send a signal that the amino acids should be best used to grow stronger. And now overeating on protein without resistance training or putting some sort of stress on your muscle will let you grow, but it will not be muscles. It will likely just be going into fat tissue. So having not enough stress is very anabolic, but it would be anabolic to your fat tissues, but having too much stress actually becomes catabolic, meaning muscle breaking down. Therefore, the takeaway from this podcast is likely going to be that just like almost every other thing in human physiology, having no inflammation would be bad, having too much inflammation would be bad, but having just right amounts of inflammation allows us to repair, recover, and become stronger. So I hope this kind of helped you maybe understand the role of inflammation and even the role of anti-inflammatories in how we grow muscle and adapt to exercise. If you would like to find anything that I have written or any of my social media, it will be in the description of this podcast. You can follow me on Instagram at Calvin underscore Scheller, and I want to just say thank you for listening, and I hope you listen to next episode.